So NWA song, F the Police, has become an anthem of revolution for many protesters because of the recent deaths of black people by police officers. The song was released 32 years ago. Are you shocked it's still relevant? It seems like it's something that could have been put out right now. What song? F the Police. No, I mean, you know, it, it's like Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. I mean, some songs are just so timeless and, and it's the truth. thematically, it's like things, we've come a long way, but there's so much far. I mean, even when you listen to James Baldwin and all the, you know, the scholars, um, and it's still relevant today. So, you know, now I'm not surprised. Well, the subject matter isn't healed. We haven't healed the subject. Yeah. Cool. So there's it's always going to be with. derivatives of any form of artistry that's going to be able to exemplify our pain, our hurt, our trials, mm -hmm. our what we go through. You know, mm -hmm. I think I think that's the brilliance of what it means to be an artist, especially an artist that's grounded, an artist that is actually feeling that there's no. And, and I kind of think that's why the protests look different this time. I think yes. the beautiful thing about the protests, it was a multicultural. Yes, diversity. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it was it was something in my lifetime I've never seen. I'm 51 yeah. and all I saw was a cultural. Right. Yeah, we, uh, the world I never and saw around a the multicultural. World. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. worldwide, I think uh, yeah. 18 countries and so yeah, we've Amen. never seen anything like this. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. To use their platform, to use their, their platforms for awareness and do celebrities have a responsibility to speak out? I, I think that the celebrities do have an obligation. Um, they need to get out there and speak on it. The more we speak on it, the more celebrities speak on it, we will be heard and things will get done. That's my take. I think we have a reach. I think because we have a reach, we have an opportunity to make a stance, to represent. You know, I think that is the beacon of light that we've been given as a gift. You know, again, I'm gonna sound like an echo. I think as artists, when this dust settles, it's March set go. I'm doing sit-ups now. At first I was eating. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm juicing now. I'm doing sit-ups. <laughs> I'll be ready. I'll be ready. I do, I do, I do, want, to to I do want to interject, but I, I, I agree that yes, we, we always have the platform to, to reach uh, people in the mass. Yeah. However, I don't want to discredit. I want people to know that you don't have to have 10,000 followers. You don't have to have 500. You don't have to have 10. Right. Your one voice is more important than all the people that we, re we reach. Amen. And I'm saying that because people think that their voice does not count. And mm -hmm. what does one vote mean? Well, it means a lot. Your yeah. voice needs to be heard. We need to hear you. Every single voice. And that's why these protests look different. Because yeah. now it's everyone coming together and yeah. everyone's voice needs to be heard and everyone's voice does count. It doesn't, yeah. you don't need to have a million followers. It's not how many likes you have. It's about you. We want to hear from that one person. Yeah. Because one person can change this whole thing. It only takes one person to move things, you know, and you right. can't feed into someone else's life. It keeps moving forward and you pass it on. And next thing you know, you have m many people doing what needs to be done for this country. I have a question. Lisa and Sheila E. George Lopez recently spoke out and said that Hispanic celebrities staying quiet during the Black Lives Matter movement is the wrong attitude. What are your thoughts on this? With George I'm Lopez. calling him tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listen. No, no. That's not muddy the water. No, no, no. I, I, think, I'm sorry. I think he, yeah, no, I think he's saying that based on, you know, everyone has their reasoning for not speaking out and waiting because there's a lot of us that had sat behind this right here to sit down and take a breath because we are seriously angry. Mm. That anger, we have to transfer into something that's going to, to, make things move and happen. So there's some people that are sitting and it's okay. And like I'm saying, everyone's voice needs to be heard. There are some people that are quiet um, and we don't know what's happening. Everyone has a story. Everyone's going through something. People are dealing with, 
their their parents having dementia and Alzheimer's and cancer and and now they can't get operations because everything has to do with pandemic so they're canceling all the surgeries I mean stuff is happening we don't yeah. know what's happening in everyone's mm-hmm. life so we have to wait and see I just think we don't need to call anybody out I think what we need I to agree. is come together as yeah. people as mm-hmm. human beings and and come in arm in arm and say look change has got to happen yeah, yeah and and everyone do, I'm sorry go on no go ahead it's okay no, I'm I know, me, say, and jo- every- me and Jody not Latin, <laughs> but we want to say something. Yeah, yes, no, yes, you are. I'm just saying, nope, you know, I got some Latin hair. <laughs> <laughs> but everybody is, you know, it could be, um, I, I, you know, for instance, I don't post a lot of things on my social. I write a blog, so I like to because I can express my full thoughts. I can post links of resources for people to help and donate and petitions to sign and everything that I can't do on Instagram or something like that. So mm-hmm. it's like some people are protesting, some people are donating, some people are working behind the yeah. scenes. So yeah. just because you don't see yeah. people in the public eye, like that doesn't mean they're not doing anything. It, it's every, we could, like Sheila said, it's like everyone famous. Has a corner, famous, you have a quadrant your neighbor, anybody, it's like yeah. everybody's authentically, hopefully doing something, yes. but just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it's not <laughs> happening. I know you post a lot on your social media. What were you going to say? I wanted to say that what Sheila said, that um, I think everybody has said something, but they've said it differently. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean usual. They've done it differently. Like Jody was saying, helping. Mm-hmm. Differently. Yeah, I, I think I think the part of being a celebrity as well as uh, uh, is not we don't always want to broadcast what we're doing to say I'm doing this. It. Do exactly. Something. It doesn't mean that we're not doing something. Right. You know, exactly. like, oh, by the way, I just gave a million dollars. No. Right. You Come on. You have to be like that. How I mean, gross is that? For for example, <laughs> yeah. For example, Ellen had said that's like I don't like telling people what I give and how much I give and what no. I do. It's a private thing. People do this privately, and we know that people are working behind the scenes, just like God is working behind the scenes. I mean, right. amen. amen. Yes. <laughs> say something. Well, right. It's called philanthropy. It's yes. called philanthropy. <laughs> <laughs> the word. I think George Lopez's heart is in the right place, and you know, people are excited and upset. And you should be saying, doing this, and you should be doing that. And I agree with you, ladies. No one should tell you how to put your energy into the movement. And, you know, there's a lot of things that people have no idea that anyone's doing. That doesn't mean they're not in, in, in the movement. We're going exactly. to see you back with more with these ladies on Fox Soul right after the break. Welcome back to Out Loud right here on Fox Soul. We've got legends in the, on the show. I would say in the building, but there is no building anymore. Okay. <laughs> Up tonight, we've got Sheila E. We've got Jody Watley. We've got Lisa Lisa and Kalita Smith. Ladies, once again, I appreciate y'all being here. And I want to get into your thoughts on cultural appropriation in the music and television industry. And what are your thoughts on this? It's definitely been a topic that people have been kind of shedding light on, showing, shedding light on the past couple of years, but it's been happening since the beginning. We stay getting swagger jacked. So, what do y'all think about the whole <laughs> that the people are doing? <laughs> We do it best. Jody, Jody, you were getting ready to say something. Go ahead. I said we do it best. (laughs) I mean, we do us and we influence. We are, uh, I saw a poster um, and it was, uh, they want our culture, but Mm -hmm. they they don't want what goes along with that. So Mm -hmm. um, I'll let you take it away. They want the rhythm and not the blues, they say. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, are, are white artists only allowed to sing and perform what reflects their own identity? Because a lot of times it seems like they're speaking on our experience. I mean, for a while, I thought white women invited, uh, invented uh, the cornrows. Corn 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 corn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let somebody else speak, but I have... That, yeah, that, I, let yeah. me say, that's a hard topic. That's a hard topic to talk about because I'm saying because it's hard to again, having to go in this split of black or white. And that is the problem, splitting things. I know they love our culture. They love who we are. They, they love our music. They love the swagger. They love the rapping. They love the jewelry, the bling, the blah, blah, blah. But do they love black people? And it's hard to talk about 
that split because when I was growing up, there was only black and there was only white and there was no brown for me growing mm -hmm. up. So I, um, I chose to be with the Black Panthers because they were around the corner and as well like fight the power, let's go. So, but the thing is, is that being that, you know, that's where we get in trouble because we're always trying to black and white and, and right. it's hard to like say, but if we just, it, it, it's easy to say, but it's not done. If, if we say we love each other unconditionally, love surpasses all understanding. So hate goes away, jealousy goes away, all of these other things that are not of love go away. And if we could just love each other and say, man, I love my brother, I love my sister, I love you, I support you, I encourage you, I'm gonna bring you hope, I'm gonna pray for you. I'm gonna... That's not the case, just that's not the real world. It, those that we try to make it that, yes, but it's so hard because that's a hard question to say, you know, I mean, I understand what you're saying because I went to, no joke, but when I went to get my hair braided, this was back in the day. I got my hair braided the very first time. And this was during the, the 70s. I got my hair braided and we went to Europe. I showed up and, and us girls in the George Duke band, we were walking the streets and I forgot where, I think it was in Germany. And we got spit on because our hair was braided. They're like, ooh, what is that? You know, they're saying stuff, they're pulling on our hair. And I'm like, wow, you know, go back to your country and blah, blah, all that. You know, so it was weird. But then when I go to get my hair braided by someone else who is not of color, it cost me $3,000. And I go to my sister down the street in the hood, who who's my girl, and she'll do it for $300. Like, it, it, it's, it's really, hmm. it, it's an interesting thing. It's, it's not. Yeah, it's fair. in depth. Yeah, it's not fair. It's not a, it's not an easy answer. Have any of y'all had experience, like, extreme experiences with racism in your careers? Yes. Lita, can you care to speak on yes. that? Yes. Um, I was in a, uh, on a show called Z Nation, and we shot in a town called Spokane, Washington. And I was there for five years. I ended up becoming the lead in the second season of the series. Um, throughout that, I was accosted and not served at a restaurant. I had to move three times um, from apartment to apartment. Um, I had crew members who did not agree that I should be the lead. And being the lead in this show meant I carried a weapon. I carried a 45 Beretta and a machete. <laughs> and I looked like I could use it. <laughs> and I felt like in their minds, I had Malcolm X playing in my head, which <laughs> I did not. Wow. But it mm. was um, insulting to the fact that they didn't think I could be professional enough mm. to simply do my job. To, to the point to where there were seven men that would check my weapons that were fake. Wow. And they were never police officers, security, or anything of that authority. But they felt the need to check my weapon every day. And I made sure they saw me check the weapon after they checked it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point in the fifth season where it was getting ready to get canceled. And I rallied with SAG and AFTRA to make sure that 86 people still had a job. Oh. And these people do not even know to this day, maybe to this this broadcast, that I'm the reason why we had a fifth season. Oh, mm. wow. that's deep. I wonder how people are thinking that see all of you as successful celebrities, people that you know we've we've seen your careers and have had amazing careers, even at that level, being a woman of color or being black still negates all of that in the eyes of some people. And how frustrating is it? Well, you know, I would like to say, you know, with, with the recording industry, what Sheila said earlier, with so many problems that it has, um, as artists of color, I will say contractually, um, promotion budgets. I mean, there's so many ways that we're like kneecapped out of the gate, even we were making millions of dollars for the label, making hit records. They will nickel and dime you. And you can still be fabulous with it and make it work, but a lesser artist that is not black or non-black will just, you know, 
they don't have to kind of go through those dynamics. Um, and I think that that is something that, you know, fans don't really, it's like, you know, um, budgets are something that have always been black artists, uh, Latino artists, I think, you know, I can't speak on, but I just feel like definitely we got to make it work regardless of the, sh the short, you know, the, sh the smaller budgets. <laughs> Like, well, I, I kind of think that that's our makeup, you know, mm -hmm. that's our makeup as a women, period, across mm -hmm. the board, and um, as women of color, you know, I think that like what Sheila was saying, the divided thing is the issue. Mm -hmm. the, the real proponent is the fact that the racism has not been healed. That whole mm -hmm. subject matter has to be healed. It's really not about braids. It's really not about uh, whatever accoutrements that our culture or brown culture brings off because mm -hmm. it's going to be attractive because it's different. It's, mm -hmm. it's unique. But if you're, not, if you're not ushered into understanding how to accept uniqueness, then you're always going to look at it with a finger. You're not going to look at it with hands. And people don't look at unique being a gift. Yeah. Lisa, <laughs> well, louder. <laughs> Lisa, I want to bring you in, Lisa. We have to take a quick break. But when we come back, I want to ask you, Lisa, about your experiences in the business and if you've ever felt the same kind of experiences. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more right after the break. Fox Soul. Welcome back to Out Loud on Fox Soul. I got to just give a little secret away right now. During the break, we are all fanning each other, fanning ourselves off. Oh, yeah. I think <laughs> don't cry anymore. Don't wait for the break. It, it, it just is what it is. We we just <laughs> at this point. That's why it's pulled up. That's why it's pulled up. Lisa, I wanted to ask you. We were speaking early about um, before the break about experiences with racism in the industry, and if you've had any experiences you care to share with us in your career very I was the only female in a huge group <laughs> it was uh. and culture. <laughs> so being the, it was very misogynistic it was you know myself and, and and having to deal with three and six six seven eight nine ten men mm. in business and being um Latina and being when I first met the guy I was uh 13 Mm. Oh my God. So that to me was the focus, you. you know, and um, it was really hard with record labels and the people that I had to deal with in the record, you know, uh, the business uh, because of the skin color. Just like Jody said, mm. budget, um, the fact that I was young and a female, mm. I, mm. I had no work. I wasn't allowed. I was a kid, mm -hmm. do as you're told and move it on. Mm -hmm. That was my experience. But that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's made me who I am today. Absolutely. The mouth has been. That has to be frustrating for you in the music industry. At the same time, you're dealing with these, lack, these low budgets, the misogyny. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, you have someone like Madonna coming up at the same time. It's like thrown so much money being thrown at her. And I'm not trying to pitch y'all against her at all, but like we, everyone knew about, you know, the force that was behind Madonna. And that, that had to be frustrating. You're working as hard. Correct? Working <laughs> but you know, again, it was all about the... Right. And, and that was difficult. That was difficult. But again, I love what I do. I will forever love what I do. And none of that is going to stop me. Yeah. I moving i kept it moving and that's what we need to do i think that's what um we're focusing on now once this is moved over the explosion is gonna get we women are taking up girl listen you know you know listen <laughs> listen i'm i'm gambling on it kind of make some wrongs in television, uh, certain episodes from, and Khalid, I want to get your take on this, several, certain episodes from several TV shows such as 30 Rock, Scrubs, and Community have been removed from, from streaming platforms because of racially sensitive humor. According to the Hollywood Reporter, Golden Girls and The Office have become the latest shows to receive backlash because of episodes featuring 
actors in blackface, I want to ask you, have you had any issues on these sets with racially incentive jokes and humor? Um, I gotta take a drink for that. No, <laughs> I, I was not on any of those shows. I would have to say that I was actually blessed in the 1900s to come through certain um, series that actually promoted Black comedy at the time or African-American comedy at the time. Um, and I also, I'm, I don't really like saying that. I just like to say brilliant comedy Yeah. at the time. It was just brilliant. It was refreshing. It was, and it kicked it off with uh, In Living Color and it, it spawned all the way into a groundbreaking situation with me with Bernie Mac. Um, I feel so blessed to have been in his his timeline to be able to cross ways with this cat and be able to play with him. Um, I think, um, um, you know, those, those times are gone because of now we have smarter writers. I really believe, like we said in the beginning of all of this, that greatness comes with pressure. It comes with being uncomfortable. We are moving through uncomfortable times so that we can be greater. And as artists, it's on us to be ready. Amen. Yeah. I like that. 